we are gonna draw the Lewis structure for X, E, O, F, four. This is my favorite one to try to trick kids with when I'm a teacher. So, step one, note that xenon, oxygen, and fluorine are all non-metals. They all come from this right-hand side of the staircase on the periodic table. And when non-metals all combine together, they form a molecular compound. It's not ionic, there's no metals here. I have a method for drawing Lewis structures of molecular compounds. Step one, count the total number of valence electrons that you're starting with. Well, xenon is in group 18 and brings eight valence electrons with it. Oxygen in group 16 brings six valence electrons with it. And fluorine in group 17 brings seven valence electrons, but there's four of them. So times it by four. Oh man, 28 plus six is 34 plus eight is 42 electrons total. That, I don't know if I've seen a Lewis structure with that many electrons before, but trust the system will work. We're gonna draw our central atom and the surrounding atoms and single bond them all to start with. Now xenon here is the one that can form an expanded octet. And usually the thing that's written first goes in the center. I'm gonna put the xenon there with the O and four Fs. There you go. All right, and I'm gonna single bond it all to start with. Check. We're gonna add lone pairs to complete the octets of the outer atoms until they are full. Now, I need 42 electrons total. But more importantly, I've got to be completing the octets on the outer atoms. That's eight electrons around each of these. Each of them already has two electrons for that single bond. So I just need to add six to each of them. I'm going to be keeping track of how many electrons I've put down total. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Man, when you were like three years old and learning to count, did you think you were ever going to have to count to 40 again in your teenage years? Well, here we are. Um, all right, we did that. We completed the octets on the outer atoms, but we only got up to 40 electrons total, and we need 42. If you have extra electrons, put them on the central atom. And I do, I need two more electrons, I need 42 total. So I gotta put a lone pair on that central atom there, 41, 42, that's it. That's the total number of electrons that I'm gonna be allowed to use, okay? And then if there's an incomplete octet on the central atom, we're gonna move lone pairs into the bonds. Now, xenon can have an expanded octet, so just being satisfied at eight electrons is not really its game. In fact, this xenon has two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons around it already. A better way to figure out if you need to make any double bonds is with something called formal charge. The formal charge on an atom is just, it's not an official charge, it's just a way to figure out if you should be moving electrons from one place to another, if there's too much electron density here or not enough there. The way that we figure out formal charge is to take the number of electrons that that atom brought with it, that's eight for xenon, minus the number of dots around it, the xenon only has two dots, minus the number of lines around it, that's one, two, three, four, five. This xenon has a formal charge of plus one. That's not catastrophic. Let's do it for the fluorines. Fluorine brought seven, minus six dots, minus one line each. It's a formal charge of zero. That's ideal. That fluorine is not likely to give up lone pairs and move them into double bonds because it already has a formal charge of zero. Let's do it for oxygen. Oxygen brought six. It has six dots around it and it has one line around it, that's a formal charge of negative one. The fact that we have a thing with a positive formal charge, plus one, 
bonded to something with a negative formal charge, that's minus one here, is a hint that maybe we should think about moving a lone pair from the negatively formal charge thing into a bond. If we do that, we are going to add an extra line to the xenon. 8 minus 2 minus 6 is now a formal charge of 0, which is better than plus 1. And this oxygen lost, well, we traded a lone pair for a line. So that became 5. Uh, no, it became 4. And that line was one, two lines now instead. It got a formal charge of zero as well. Hey, look at that. It is always better to have formal charges of zero, although, like I said, a formal charge of plus or minus one isn't catastrophic. Having them beside each other in a structure might imply that you should draw that, um, you know, move a lone pair into a double bond. Now I'm just going to redraw the, the, the final structure here so you can see it. We got our xenon double bonded to oxygen, and that oxygen is two lone pairs left over. We are single bonded to four fluorines. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. And we have a lone pair on the xenon. Well, there you go. There is your completed Lewis structure. I'm just going to move that over there. That was a previous video, so just ignore it. Congratulations, you drew the Lewis structure of what I consider to be one of the most challenging structures you can ask. And uh, sure, you did it with my help, but you did it. I'm proud of you, and best of luck.